Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the network configuration of your server. Now, if you're going to run a server, uh, you're going to want to make sure that your network configuration is set up properly so that you have access to the server whenever you need it. Uh, without a proper network configuration, you're going to have problems accessing the services. Your client machines won't be able to access them, uh, those sorts of things. And so what I want to do today is talk about how you set that up. Uh, now, a couple of things. Um, one of the things you notice is on our network interfaces, I've got this set up with Ethernet. Uh, now, setting up with Ethernet is highly recommended. You can run a server with Wi-Fi, uh, but the problem with running it with Wi-Fi is that if your Wi-Fi connection cuts out for some reason, so does your server. And Wi-Fi connections can be inconsistent. So if you've got a lot of people hitting your server and your server, uh, your Wi-Fi bandwidth is having a problem, then people won't be able to access your server, and that's going to create an issue. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, you're going to want to assign a static IP address to your server, so an IP address that doesn't change. And so in order to do that, we're going to need to do that inside the actual router itself. Now you'll notice up here I've got uh, a little uh, router here and it says office. That's because I've got an Apple uh, Airport Extreme base station attached to my server. Now if you don't have a base station, this won't show up here for you. You'll have to take care of everything uh, manually using whatever interface that your router came with, which is fine. You can do that. Uh, but one of, the, one of the great things about using an Airport Extreme base station is that server will take care of opening and closing ports for you as you add services without you having to add them manually and then restarting your router, which is an interruption in service then to all of your users. Uh, so it really is a nice bonus that's included here. Uh, in fact, let me just show you uh, what that looks like here. Uh, if you just come to Apple's web page, this is an Airport Extreme right here. You can see it's a little bit of a, of a tower setup. Uh, if I just uh, click on the back, you can see the different ports that are there. Uh, you've got your uh, WAN port that would go to your actual uh, modem. And then you've got three uh, LAN ports or ports that you could plug your different devices in, including you'd use one of these to plug your server in. Uh, and then it's got a USB port as well. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that, uh, and that was available so for $199. I wanted to show you that because, like I said, it really does give you uh, a lot of options there. And we're going to take a look at this when we look at port forwarding. So let's go ahead and talk about how to set up this static IP address here. So what I'm going to do is pull up the airport utility here. And what I get is I get a diagram of my network and how everything is set up. So let me just cover this real quick. So this internet area here, represented by the globe, you can see it's green, and so I've got that set up, uh, is connected to my modem. So this kind of represents my modem here. It's got a hard line uh, connected to the actual router itself. Uh, and that's what that single line is, is that's an Ethernet connection. And then I've got another base station out there uh, to extend my network, and it's doing it wirelessly, and that's why I've got the dotted line there. And so it's just a diagram of how my network is actually set up. So let's go ahead and uh, go into the router itself. So if I just click on the router, I get this, and I just click on Edit. And it brings down this drop-down for me to be able to edit my settings in my airport. So if I come over to Network here, uh, this is where all of these things take place. And so let me just explain a little bit of what this window is telling us. Uh, the first thing you'll see here is you'll see my router mode. And this is really important. I'm just going to click on this to show you the different modes. Uh, I can set my router in off or bridge mode, which means basically that my router uh, is not doing any routing itself. It's just bridging to another router uh, to extend my network. And so that's like my, what my second base station is doing is, is, it, is it's in bridge mode extending my network. Then I've got DHCP only, uh, and DHCP stands for Dynamic Host uh, configuration protocol and that's what does all of the assigning of addresses on your network so every time your device hits the network uh, it needs an IP address uh, a local one so that it can access all of the servers on, uh, all of the services on that network and so that's where you can see below we've got IP addresses of 10.0.1.3 and that sort of thing now DHCP and NAT is the same DHCP service, but it adds uh, NAT, which is Network Address Translation or Port Forwarding. 
And so that's the mode that you want to have your airport you, uh, airport in. Uh, depending on your different routers, you'll have a different setup. Now you'll notice DHCP reservations go here, and you can see the NAT part or the port settings go down here. And I'm going to cover those in more uh, detail when we get to the place where we're talking about port forwarding. So you'll notice I've got a DHCP range. So I've got a range from uh, you know uh, 0.2 to 0.200. Those are all the addresses that the router will assign. Uh, 0.1 is just reserved for the router itself. That's why that doesn't show up there. And down here is where I have the reservations. And you can see I've got different things already set up with reservations already. Now, one of the things I want to do is show you how to set up a reservation for your server, because this is going to be very important for you to do. Uh, to do that, I just hit a plus, click the plus right here, and you notice I can put in a description. So, for instance, if I just put in server right here, and I can choose to reserve the address by MAC address or by DHCP uh, and the client's ID. So what I'm going to do is use MAC address, because uh, that's the easiest here sitting in front of my server. And then I can set up whatever address I want here. You can see when I click on that, it allows me to delete it and put whatever I want in there. So I could put in, let's say, 200 or whatever number I want. And then all I've got to do is put in a MAC address here. So let me show you how to find that. Uh, to find the MAC address, you want to go into uh, System Preferences, and you go to the Network tab. And inside this Network tab, what we're going to do is go to the Advanced uh, area here, and all the way over to where it says Hardware. And in this hardware area, this is your MAC address. And so what you want to do is copy this address right here. And when we're done, let me just say cancel here, and we're just going to put that down. You paste that MAC address right in here. And when you're done, you save it. And then what will happen is, is once you've done that, then you will have a DHCP reservation show up here. Now what this means is that every time I restart my router or restart my server or anything like that, my server will always get the same local IP address. That's very important because all of your other devices will be set to using that local IP address for their own DNS on the network. And if that number were to change because you didn't set up a reservation, then all of their DNS queries would get messed up. And so this is the way to make sure that everything's set the same in the way that you want it. Once you do that, then you just click on the Update button, and it will reset your uh, router and make that reservation happen. And then your server will get that same address every single time it starts up. Let me just go ahead and put this down for a minute. And that's where you get the, the address right here. Uh, and that's what I've set up with that reservation. So it's really important that you do that to make sure those reservations take place. Now once you've set that up and once you've done that and got that up and ready to go and got your static IP address, uh, then we want to make sure it's the same on the server itself. So I'm going to go back into uh, System Preferences here and back into this uh, network utility. And you'll notice my IP address is showing there because it's gotten the reservation just how I want it. I've got my router's IP address there. And then I've got this DNS server area right here. And you can see that I've got this one number right here, which says basically to look to itself for DNS, which is fine. That 127 number is exactly what I want to leave there. And then it's given me some other numbers as well that are sitting right here. Now, if I just want to change that, if I go into Advanced, and I go to DNS. Uh, I can come in here and change the DNS servers in here as well. If I wanted to add my 10.0.1.3 number, I could do that. Now, I don't have to do that because it's already set to look to itself. That's what this number means uh, for DNS. But if I wanted to add that, I could. Uh, I could also add some other DNS servers. Like if I wanted to add OpenDNS or something like that, I could put that in here as well just to make sure that all my changes have taken place. Uh, right now, I'm just going to leave this alone. This is an IP6 uh, uh, DNS server address, and IP uh, version 6 is now coming out more and more because we've kind of run out of the IP version 4 uh, addresses across the internet, and so this adds a lot more numbers, which means a lot more expandability. Uh, so we're kind of in a transition uh, to this IP version 6, um, but I'll, I'll maybe talk more about that in another screencast. But let's go ahead and just, I'm going to cancel this for right now and leave this alone. But this is where you want to make sure that everything's set up the way you want it. I'm just going to pop this down here. Now once we've done that, uh, the other thing we want to do is make sure we've got our router set up properly. So we're going to go back out to our airport utility again, and we're going to want to make sure that we've got our uh, IP address set up the way we want it on here as well. So we're going to go into Internet here. And on the Internet tab, what we've got is you can see we've got DNS servers here that are already pre-set up. 
And so what I want to do is go in and put our server's IP address in there. So let me go ahead and set that up. Okay, so in here I'm going to put in my local IP address. Just like that. And then I need to put an external uh, DNS server as well, because remember, this, uh, this is a local number, so it's only going to do translation on my local network, but I need something to do an external translation. So let me put in, I'm going to put in an open DNS number, just like that. And uh, open DNS is a great service if you haven't checked it out. It allows you to filter uh, your web content coming in and out, and it does it at the, uh, at the router level so that uh, that way you don't have to do it per machine. So it's just something that I use um, to really make the make the setup work. So I'd want to put all of that information in there. And once I'm done, right, and I've got it the way I want it, then I would hit update and the router will update itself. Uh, I'm not going to hit that yet because it's going to shut everything down, but I just wanted to show that to you. And I wouldn't worry right now about your IP6 uh, uh, DNS uh, servers. Um, though uh, I'm sure we could do a reservation for that as well and I'll probably look at doing something like that in the future but we're just gonna leave that alone for now and let me just put this uh, let me just put this down I'm gonna come over here to this area and let me just pop that down okay so once I've got all of that uh, set up and ready to go then I've got my uh, DNS uh, set and I would make those settings uh, available then to my other machines uh, now what we want to do is move into talking about how to open up the ports so that you can access your server remotely, and we'll do that in our next screencast. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.